And it's insane, because if you look at the business practices of Elsevier and Springer and Taylor and Francis Wiley, these big publishers, they do not share these principles, which we say underpin like good science and human values. And it kind of makes me a little bit sick when you see you know, Elsevier say that they partner with the research community to empower open science. Like, what the bloody hell is that? It's just an outright lie, right? And we should be challenging them on this. And, you know, thankfully, you know, we are. This is a tribute video to my late friend and collaborator, John Tennant. In this video, I will try to do two things. One, go over the rare traits and behaviors that John embodied and exhibited that we should all strive to emulate a little bit more, and two, go over how John has inspired and continues to inspire me and impact my work in scientific transparency, particularly focusing on how John's spirit and legacy has given me strength to conduct our recent bold transparency audit initiative and also given me strength to survive the ensuing nasty personal attacks and general uproar the initiative caused. So first, John's rare traits and behaviors that he embraced and embodied. First, he fought for principles, foundational principles like foundational scientific principles like transparency and replication, the human right to access scientific research, or the fact that science requires the broadest dissemination and scrutiny possible, and core ethical principles like honesty, independence, and objectivity. The logic here is to start with these first principles that almost no one can disagree with and then stay as close to those principles as possible to guide your behavior and inform your decisions when implementing transparency initiatives. Second, John fought for noble causes. John fought to fix science to save lives. And this is what the present scholarly publishing industry is doing in, in many respects in exchange for billions of our dollars every year. And this is not like a bug. This is a feature of the system. And if we believe that sci science can save lives, then, you know, then preventing access to science must by default cost lives. And so John realized the high stakes of science and how science is the best way to cure diseases and find treatments for devastating psychological and medical conditions that continue to afflict millions of people all around the world every year. Noble causes can also include reducing suffering and preventing deaths of one's own family and loved ones. Like my own personal situation, where several of my own close family members have greatly suffered and or died from devastating medical or psychological conditions. We cannot make maximum progress on improving treatments and cures for these diseases if publicly funded research is not minimally transparent, which sadly appears to be the case for the vast majority of published research. So for example, open data rates in biomedicine have barely increased in 20 years, and the same pattern exists in psychology and in social sciences more broadly where transparency have also been tracked. And so even though there's small progress in the right direction, at the end of the day, currently, more than 90% of all published peer-reviewed academic research is opaque, meaning it doesn't meet a minimum transparency standard. And by combining these two golden rules, John was afforded with, in a sense, these superpowers like courage to tackle the biggest, most difficult problems, but also resilience and strength to survive when things get tough or personal attacks arise. And so now I'll turn more specifically to how John has inspired me and impacted my transparency work. I was lucky to befriend John at Igdor in Bali, Indonesia in April 2010 for about a month where we had regular conversations, some of which got heated, about open science, and thereafter we regularly communicated over emails to discuss our projects and help each other move forward. His charisma, his infectious passion was palpable. I vividly remember having discussions with him and seeing the fire in his eyes, the fire in his heart, 
which rubbed off on me then, but it rubbed off on me even more later. It emboldened me to be more aggressive and courageous in my curious science author page work at the time. But this became a stronger impact more recently in January of this year, 2021, where I was designing and contemplating implementing transparency audits, which I was ambivalent about. I knew it was a bit bold and I suspected it would cause a lot of pushback. So I was ambivalent, but then John Spirit and Legacy gave me strength to go through with it. So again, the context is that the current situation is that the vast majority of research is opaque and hundreds of different carrots and rewards have been used for over 20 years by unending open science initiatives and tools promoted by thousands of groups and collectives all over the world. And these carrots have helped. We can see positive trends in the right direction. But given that we're still dealing with 90% or more research being opaque, it's clear that carrots are not enough. We need more than just carrots. And so I applied the principles. Fight for principles, fight for noble causes. Science requires minimum transparency for at least three reasons, conceptually, ethically, and personally. Conceptually, in practice, minimum transparency is the crucial ingredient that makes science work by allowing independent scrutiny and checking. Ethically, minimum transparency is an ethical duty of ours, expected and or required by funding agencies and public intellectual government codes of conduct. And personally, minimum transparency is required for life and death situations. Imagine your loved one has a terminal illness. As a responsible family member, you would always choose a treatment based on transparent research rather than opaque research. Hence, logically one must apply the same principle to non-life and death research. And so now a second example of how John has continued to impact my work is fast forward to just last month when our audit announcement tweet caused immense uproar and nasty personal attacks. Again, I was able to draw upon John's presence, spirit, and legacy for strength. And also huge kudos to John's sister, Rebecca Tennant, for her emotional support and informal legal guidance with respect to cyberbullying issues. So in conclusion, to all researchers, open science researchers, and meta-scientists, remember to fight for principles and fight for noble causes. Of course, it's easy to get sidetracked and derailed by extra scientific motives like careerism, ego, financial interests, or political goals. But keep in mind, when you die, only your work lives on. So you might as well focus on foundational principles and noble causes. Whenever you encounter a tricky or difficult situation in science, remember to ask yourself, is your decision or behavior consistent with first principles and noble causes? If we collectively start acting closer to these ideals, we'll be able to accelerate our research culture's transformation whereby open is the new norm which will fix academic science forever to the benefit of all.